Uh, I now call on uh, Deputy Clare Daly for sharing 10 minutes with Deputy Mick Wallace. Yeah, thanks very much, Ken Corla. Uh, eight and two. Um, I think the report really, in some ways, is a bit like the much awaited sequel to a Hollywood blockbuster. The second version never really cuts it like the first. And that's not a reflection on Fenley, but it is a reflection, I suppose, that despite the hyping up, of this issue. It was never a case of covert mass surveillance on the population ruthlessly organised by Angarda Siakana. Not that I don't think they're morally capable of that, I just don't think they have the wherewithal, they're too disorganised to actually pull off something like that. And I think Justice Fennelly does give an incredibly accurate portrayal of the technical procurement and management systems that led to this debacle being in place in the first place. And he gives a very good legal oversight of the illegality and the unlawful nature of this practice, and, and he should be complimented for that. But what does it say that the government and the hierarchy can take a relief and breathe aside that, well, sure, look, at it was only in ignorance it wasn't malpractice. Thank God we're not corrupt, we're only incompetent. And really, when you look at what Fennelly says, it is scathing. Senior management of Angarda Siakona failed to formulate or promulgate any policies or directives. They failed to draw up any formal set of rules. There was a great deal of confusion amounting to ignorance, fundamental and regrettable defects in how the recording system was managed and on. And that the decision to set up the system in the first place was based on a misunderstanding by the fellow who signed the order. And then it was just built upon after that. And if you read the report. Across the whole thing, we have statements being said which says one thing, and the Gardaí who read them or don't read them draw a different conclusion from it. It's absolutely, incredibly unbelievable stuff. Mass ignorance, really, is what you'd call it, until it gets to the stage of the Holness report and that case in Waterford. And let's remember, this was the first time GSOC initiated a criminal investigation. Three Gardaí were convicted of assaulting a citizen very, very serious case in the course of which evidence was attempted to be introduced of phone calls including uh, from those stations. The judge said the recordings had been obtained in an unlawful manner and were therefore inadmissible. It's very clear in the Fennelly report that that information was immediately given to the hierarchy of Angarda Siakana. It's also clear that former Commissioner Callanan acted upon it straight away and he sent an instruction to Noreen O'Sullivan to ask what were the legal implications of this ruling, an explicit ruling which said it was unlawful and there were questions regarding the evidence. We know that Assistant Commissioner Ludlow also faxed Noreen O'Sullivan about that. She does respond in one instance saying to uh, John O'Mahony uh, that as a matter of urgency he should report on this question. But he didn't, and she didn't follow it up. And years later they said, oh, sure, look, do you know what, we didn't actually know that that was mean and, and non-999 calls, even though when GSOC wrote to them, they specifically spelt, spelt out that they were questioning the lawfulness of incoming and outgoing phone calls. So we all know how could an outgoing phone call be a 999 call. It was very, very clear what they were being told, but they either didn't have the ability or didn't care enough to actually take that to its logical conclusion, and that in and of itself is disgraceful. It's also disgraceful that they didn't consider, even without the Holness case, the question of legality of this whole practice to begin with, particularly in light of the phone tapping scandals that uh, were in, in place in the state uh, previously. And I think those points do need to be taken further. Very, very serious. Again, I want to put on the record that the handling of the uh, situation with former Commissioner Callanan. Actually, as we said previously in the earlier report, Commissioner Callanan handled this situation perfectly. You couldn't fault it. And there's no actual logic at all. And of course, he wasn't sacked because of that. Uh, it was all the other stuff, which we were obviously on the record before that as saying he should have been asked to stand down over. But in this instance, he handled it perfectly. Unlike the Attorney General, who, as other deputies have said, has a huge amount to answer for. And how that woman was reappointed is beyond me, to be honest, because she did present an alarming picture, despite the evidence that was presented to her. We know that she substantially altered the evidence that she gave to Fennelly. She excluded the Minister for Justice from these situations. And her actions were not rational 
in light of her statements. They didn't follow a reasonable sequence. And this is the person to whom we must take legal advice on a whole number of issues. Very, very worrying situation and a lot to be answered for in uh, that regard. But the main point I want to concentrate on is the terms of reference 1M and what Fennelly was asked to look at to examine the recordings uh, regarding the investigation into the murder of Sophie Tuscon de Plantia and to examine whether they disclosed any evidence of unlawful and improper conduct by members of the Gardaí. Bottom line, they did. And what Justice Fenley said, he viewed this term of reference as being a preliminary task for the Commission to report on evidence that might warrant further investigation. Taoiseach, the evidence that Fenley has unearthed in these tapes, which incidentally is not isolated from the evidence that was in the unpublished internal Garda report into that situation and the court cases around uh, Ian Bailey, means that that does warrant further investigation. And for the government to turn around and say, well, we're going to refer it to GSOC now to see do they want to have any further investigation. Not good enough. The evidence is before us. Evidence of a willingness to falsify, alter and suppress evidence. A young Garda who said that Jules Thomas Ian ba Bailey's partner was being truthful and trying to rec re recollect the situation. Uh, Liam Cogan said, this is in the statement, it has to be taken effing out. He said, God, we have to put a stop to this honest man. This undermines the whole thing. I'll take it out, so the fuck I will. He said, we can't have that. Evidence of tampering with statements. Fenley didn't rule in terms of illegal drugs, but I would say that those drugs were, were uh, those phone calls were tapped in the knowledge of the um, uh, Garda involved in that. And a lot of the evidence would lead you to believe that there could be planting of drugs, but certainly money was paid to a witness in uh, that regard. We know six different phone calls where uh, Garda, uh, Jim Fitz, uh, Fitzgerald was willy-nilly, actually, sorry, Liam Hogan, was telling everybody who rang the station that Ian Bailey was uh, guilty uh, in this regard. And we know in the terms of the assault claim against uh, Mary Farrell's husband, how they tried to curry favour with her as a witness in this case by pretending that they were going to drop the charges. Absolutely outrageous. Two years ago, Taoiseach, I was on the record as saying that Ian Bailey's legal team, two years ago, reckoned that the case, his case and the handling of it had cost the state 40 to 50 million. That's before all of the hours in assembling and analysing these tapes which prove, yet again, the attempts made by Angarda Siakona to fit up this person, which has had an absolutely horrendous consequence on him, a, a huge human cost to his partner, and obviously leaves the family of so Sophie Tuscan de Plantier without uh, any answers. It's particularly serious to say that this tainted evidence, and the DPP's reports reveal this before, has been sent to France and is the basis Morgan. upon which the French authorities are pursuing this man. It's not good enough. We need Deputy an independent Wallace. commission of investigation now into that case. Deputy